Today we upgrade the thermistor on this original Prusa Mark III. A couple of months ago I did a video on how to add thermistors and temperature tables to Marlin, but our buddy Dan from Slice Engineering reached out to me and said he was getting a lot of questions on how to upgrade the thermistor on an original Prusa printer while maintaining the firmware. And you might already know the guys at Slice Engineering. They're the ones that created the Mosquito Hot End, but they also have some items that go along with it, like nozzles, these high temperature thermistor cartridges which we're going to be using today, as well as 50 watt heaters and a few other things. And as always, if people have questions or they need to know how to do something, I'm more than happy to help. So today we're going to install this Slice Engineering thermistor on the Prusa Mark III. Now this process should be pretty much similar for the Mark III and the Mark II. You should be able to use it for both. Also, I am going to alter the Prusa firmware and reload it. So it will be the same firmware that you're currently using on your printer if you're up to the most recent release. So let's get started by installing the thermistor, then we'll move to the firmware. So here's a look at the thermistor. These are good up to 450C, maybe even a little higher than that. And they also offer the extension for installing the thermistor. I recommend you just go ahead and grab this too because it makes the install all that much easier. So to make the thermistor easier to remove, I like to move the Z almost all the way up. You can do that just by holding the button. That'll bring up the Z menu and then we can just lift it to the top. Once it's up, I'm going to turn on the hot end to about 250 so it loosens up any plastic that might be built up on the heater block. Let's go into settings, temperature, We'll run the nozzle up. There we go. And with it preheated, there's a grub screw right here that releases that thermistor. It should just slide out the side. There's no need to back this out all the way. You do want to use the best Allen wrench you have. You don't want to strip that grub screw. And with it preheated, it should back out fairly easily. Now you're going to have to install new wires and everything for your thermistor anyway, so you're going to have to remove some of these zip ties to get enough clearance to get that thermistor out. Now I removed my part cooling fan duct just so I could show you a little better. You might not have to do that, but it's just one screw on the Mark III so it's not that big a deal. You can see the thermistor right there. You can just push it out with that same Allen key you use on that grub screw. And now that that thermistor is out, you can go ahead and power off your printer. We can let it cool down, but we can go ahead and slide the new thermistor in there and tighten up that grub screw. The slice thermistor should fit in the E3D block just fine. Of course it fits in the Mosquito block as well if you have that upgrade. We'll slide the slice thermistor in so it's just flush with the front of the heater block. And then we can go ahead and re-tighten our grub screw. Doesn't need to be super tight, just needs to not move around anywhere. We should be good. The slice thermistor does come with this connector on it, and I found it easiest to route it over these heater wires and then zip tie it somewhere in this area where it's out of the way. You can just kind of add it to this loom right back here. So just loop it over like this. Then you can add your extension, and you should be able to tuck it up in this area, add a few zip ties, and everything should fit just fine. And then on the board side, as always, it's hard to see in this compartment, but for the extruder on the Prusa, it's more than likely got a yellow or yellow and green tag on it. It goes right here. There should be three plugs in a row, and on the other side will be the green for the bed thermistor. So we'll remove this one and we'll plug in our new thermistor in that same spot. Now the Slice Engineering thermistor is just gonna have a DuPont connector on the other side, and it doesn't really matter which side you plug in where, the red or the black, but you might as well keep it the same as the Prusa does. So put the red one towards the frame, and the black one away from the frame, just like that. And after you've done your wire management, you can go ahead and close it up. So that's all there is to it as far as the hardware goes. Now on Prusa printers, the wire management gets a little bit interesting. There's sleeving, maybe some spiral wrap, a lot of zip ties. If you get confused, check out the assembly instructions on the Prusa site. That'll get you back on track. Now let's get into the firmware and configure the new thermistor. So let's head over to the Prusa GitHub. Link in the description. We'll head into Prusa firmware. Make sure your branch is for the correct printer. Mark III is what I'm on, so that's the branch I'm going to select. I'm just going to hit clone or download. Download zip. So we'll right click on our firmware download, we'll extract all, go to the firmware folder, firmware again, and these are all the files that are contained in the firmware package. Now most of the time when Prusa wants you to update your printer, you're going to head out to the Prusa site, go to support, and go to drivers and firmware and manuals, and you're going to download firmware here. 
This is going to give you a zip file, but that zip file, if you extract it, it's going to contain a .hex file that you would upload to your printer from Slick3R. This is a much more convenient way to update because you don't need an IDE to compile. You can just put it straight to your printer and it keeps things a lot simpler so you can't mess around with a lot of things. Since we're adding a thermistor that's not already contained in the Prusa files, we're going to have to edit the files, then compile it and upload it. So we can't use the hex file. So back to the firmware files. First thing we need to do is get the variant of printer that we're using. So we'll go into variants. These are the different boards that have been offered with the Mark IIs and the Mark III's. My Mark III is still a regular Mark III, not a Mark III S. So we're going to grab the Mark III INC 10A. We're going to copy that. Go back up one folder and we're going to paste it here in the main folder. And we're going to rename that file we copied for our variant to configuration underscore Prusa. Now that that rename's done, we can go ahead and open the firmware INO file. You do need the Arduino IDE for this. Link in the description. Now you are going to need the Rambo library to be able to update this successfully. You can compile it as a 2560, but you're not going to get all the pins that come on the Rambo. So if you don't have that library, just go to Tools, go to Boards, Board Manager, and up here at the top, you can just search Rambo. And you'll see this RipRap Arduino compatible motherboard Rambo. Mine's already installed, but you're going to need that if you want to compile this software. So we can close that. And before you make any changes to the firmware, I recommend you go ahead and do a verify to make sure that that file rename that we did before is good to go. So let's go to Tools, select your Rambo, down here and just do a verify and the verify should be successful you see done compiling right here that's how we know our code is good to go on the printer before we make any changes now we can start setting up the thermistor table in Marlin each thermistor gets its own file but in Prusa they just put a couple different thermistors the ones that they used in one main file so we're just going to add the thermistor table to that file so if you go over here to the drop down you can go to thermistor tables.h and you can see the handful of thermistors that are configured to use with the Prusa. Most of the time you're going to be using an E3D thermistor and that's known in Marlin and Prusa firmware as a number five. So if you come down a little ways you'll see temp table five. This is the default thermistor for most Prusa printers. You'll see that in the configuration underscore Prusa file as well, the one we renamed. So if we go to the drop down, if we go to configuration underscore Prusa and scroll down a ways, you'll see the thermistor is configured right here underneath these if else statements. So our extruder is a number five. That's what we want to change. So now we need to add our thermistor temp table. So let's go back to temp tables and let's just scroll down to the bottom underneath all the other configured thermistors. Right here's a good spot to start working and we want to make sure that we don't break any of the syntax that's in place. There's lots of if statements and things configured to make this file work. We want to keep them as straight as possible. So just to keep the same syntax, let's go ahead and copy this whole thermistor config right here, and we'll just edit the values. So we want this whole if statement. So we'll just copy it, and let's open up Notepad++. I think it's easier to edit things in there. And we'll just paste in that table that we copied. Now, this is the older syntax of how you set up a thermistor table. They use this oversampling word. That's not in the newer versions of Marlin, they just use OV but we have to keep with the same syntax that Prusa uses. So if we head out to the Slice Engineering website, they have the thermistor table for this thermistor. So if you go to Resources, Documentation, here's your temp table. Now the way that they have their temp table configured, it's actually backwards of how I like to put the thermistors in. It needs to go in the opposite direction. Now you can go ahead and flip this around if you want to. The easiest way to do it for me is either with Excel or Google Sheets, but I've already flipped it around for you, so you can just use the table that I provide in the description. So here's the temp table I created for Marlin for the Slice Engineering Thermistor. It's just been reordered and I'm using the syntax that Marlin uses. It's the same exact table that's on the Slice Engineering site. But we need to take this information and put it in the syntax that Prusa uses. So let's just take all of our values and we'll copy them. And then we'll head back to the values that we copied out of the Prusa firmware, the older syntax model, and we'll just mimic that syntax. So we'll just paste in our values right here. And instead of OV, like in the newer versions of Marlin, we need the ADC number times oversampling in R and then the temperature. So in Notepad++, if you want to edit a bunch of things at one time, you can just click right before the first thing you want to edit. And then you can hold the Alt key and that will let you select a whole column. 
So holding Alt, we'll just scroll down. We'll select all of our values over to that parenthesis, and we can just delete them. And while it's still selected, just go ahead and hit Backspace, and you can delete that empty space as well. And then right after all of our ADC values, we need to add in that oversampling in R. So again, we can just highlight the whole column, hold Alt, select the whole column, and we can just type it in. Asterisk, oversample, in R. Then we can do a comma after that, and then all we need to do is update our temperature values. So you can just hit delete for this column, delete one more time to get rid of the extra commas and spaces, and then some of these that have the shorter numbers, we can go through and clean this up. So we need to get rid of this parenthesis here. We'll get rid of these spaces. Again, just holding Alt, selecting the whole column. We'll get rid of these spaces as well. We want to keep it nice and tidy. Down here, clean up those. And one more. Right here. So that looks good. That's all the values in the syntax that we need for the Prusa firmware. So we can just get rid of all these other values. We need to keep the end if because that's how the file's set up. So we'll just delete down to here. We've still got our end if down here at the bottom. We can go ahead and update our comment. So back to my temp table, we'll just grab this right here. This gives us a little bit more information about the slice engineering thermistor. We'll just copy that, paste it right in there. And now we just need to clean up our if statement and select a number for this thermistor. So up here on the if statement, there's a couple of different thermistors you can have on the printer ambient, bed, extruder. So let's go back to our IDE and take a look at that. You can see all of these OR statements. Just to be safe, we'll go ahead and select all of them. We'll copy that line. Back to Notepad++. Again, this is the file that we're building. We're going to paste this into the firmware when we're done. We'll overwrite this complete top line right here. And let's make our slice engineering thermistor 800. I'm just selecting 800. You can use any number you want, but I know 800 is not being used by Prusa. So all of these values up here, we're just going to make them 800. Heater 0, heater 1, heater 2, and bed. Just in case. And then our temp table value, it's currently set to 2000. We're going to make that 800 as well. So basically what we're saying for Prusa firmware is that if we want to use a slice engineering thermistor, we're going to put 800 in our configuration file. Make sure what you copied is correct. These do need to be closed in parentheses. We missed one there. We'll update that. And when everything looks good, we'll go ahead and copy everything, the whole if statement. We'll head back to the IDE. And then underneath the last configured thermistor, we'll just add a couple of spaces. And we'll paste it right in here. Give it one more look. Make sure everything looks correct. And then we can head over to configuration underscore Prusa and update to our new 800 value for our new thermistor. Go to the pull down, configuration underscore Prusa. Our temp sensor zero, that's our extruder thermistor, is now going to be 800. That's our new slice engineering thermistor. And we'll add a comment up here. Slash slash 800 is slice engineering 450C thermistor. Now the thermistor is good, but there's a couple more things that we need to adjust. And I've noticed on the slice engineering thermistors, they're a little more sensitive at low temp. So I like to decrease the min temp value so it doesn't hit that min temp error. So if we scroll up a bit, on the heater zero min temp value, I'm going to take it from 15 to 5. That's just going to keep it from getting that error if it gets too cold. It shouldn't impact your printer at all. And because we're uploading from the IDE, there's one more thing we have to change, and that's the language mode. So we need to go to the config.h tab, not configuration.h, config.h. So we'll go over to the pull down, select config.h, and down here towards the bottom, you have language mode. I'm just going to comment out language mode 1, and then right above it, I'm going to uncomment this one. That's language mode 0. That's going to make your printer primary language English only. I'm not sure why this gets messed up when you upload through the IDE, but you'll get all kinds of crazy scrambled messages if you don't default to one language. But that should be it. We can go ahead and verify to make sure all of our changes look good. The verify was successful. Now we can go ahead and upload. On a Rambo Ultimachine board, you need to power on the printer and cable USB. You can't just do it with USB. So make sure your printer's on, you're cabled up, go to Tools, 
Make sure you're on the Rambo board that we installed earlier. Make sure you're on the right COM port. I'm on 12. And hit upload. Once the upload starts, you're going to get this message on the LCD that it's upgrading the firmware. And once the upload is complete, you'll see it's done uploading. And our thermistor appears to be reporting correctly. We can go ahead and preheat, make sure everything's heating up. Everything looks like it's heating up correctly. Let's go ahead and load some filament, start a test print. And everything's back up and running and printing just like usual. And that's it. The upgrade to the Slice Engineering Thermistor was successful. Now there are a few things you have to tweak when you're using the IDE to upload your firmware, but once you have the lay of the land and you get in there and look around, they're not that hard to find. Especially if you have my files, which will be in the description below, you can pretty much just copy and paste everything. And if you have an error with your firmware, don't fear. You can just go grab the latest version of the firmware from the Prusa site, use that hex file with Slick3R, and get right back to where you were, no worries. Thanks to Slice Engineering for providing the thermistors for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.